Alright, so today we are learning about what happens when you drop in a red blood cell into these three types of solutions. Now, in the past, the industry standard has been a red blood cell. But recently, I've noticed that some test writers have been making this a osmotic bag. Which means it's like a plastic bag, but the bag can let water in and out. And even just, if they go one step further, you can also apply this to an, an egg if you remove the shell with vinegar. So just be very mindful when you get your test and about what this object is. Um, you know, red, red blood cell is the industry standard, and I'm going to keep teaching it like a red blood cell. But the science is the same, regardless if it's an osmotic bag or whatever. So we have our <clears throat> red blood cells in here. And now what we need to do is to determine... What is going to change with them? The shape. Okay, they want to know what what does a hypertonic solution affect on the shape of this red blood cell. Now, if you do not uh, have you not already watched my video uh, earlier, I have a video out there on determining what these three are. And so, if we remember from that video, a hypertonic solution, I always said giving kids sugar will make them hyper. So the solution is going to be higher in solute. Now, that can be salt as well. But um, I use sugar to kind of help me remember it. And then I remember, oh, sol solute can be salt or sugar. So you're going to have a higher content of uh, salt and sugar versus water. So um, we're just going to pick a number. Uh, we're going to say 80% uh, sugar and then down here we'll say 20% water just to make things a little easier to read. All right, now we have our hypotonic solution. I remember, I told you to remember the O because H2O is water. And this is telling you that hypo has a higher water content than it does a solute content. Uh, so we could just say anything like 30% uh, sugar. And of course, 70% water and then ISO it means equal so 50% sugar 50% water okay so now that we have our percentages for these three types of solutions made up we need to determine what is going to happen with this red blood cell now I always I always assume that these blood cells are like a 50-50 mix. Okay, so 50% solute, 50% solvent. So I'm going to say 50-50, okay? You just have to, that's one thing you unfortunately have to assume that these are probably going to be. Now, the next thing we have to determine is where is the higher concentration in all three of these? Because remember, in osmosis, we tr it travels from a high concentration to a low concentration. So um, I, I'll write that up there because a lot of my students keep forgetting that high concentration to a low. All right. So it flows from high to low. And what is flowing? Water only. So I'm really, I'm only looking at the water. Um, a lot of students will come up to me and start talking about movement of sugars, and, and uh, no. Remember, osmosis is the movement of the one molecule that we are concerned with, and that is water. Okay, The movement of water. So if we look down here, we have a 20% water. Now, 20%, I'd say that's pretty low. So I'm going to put an LC for low concentration. And obviously, in the center, in this, inside the cell, you can assume that it's going to be probably a higher concentration because 20 is pretty low. And so... How does this flow? It flows from high to low. Well, high is inside the cell, which means water is going to leave the cell, pass through the cell membrane, and go out into the solution, which is going to cause this cell to, well, if you're taking something out of it, it's going to cause the cell to shrink. So the cell will shrink in a hypertonic solution. All right, moving on. Hypotonic solution. We see we have a 70% water. And then down here we have 50. Okay, so where is the higher concentration? 
well, it's going to be outside the cell. So I'm going to put an HC for higher concentration and put an LC for lower concentration. Well, if you remember, water flows from high to low concentration and, pos and passive transport in osmosis. So water is going to enter the cell. Well, we are, so now we are filling up the cell, so this can make the cell expand or burst. Okay, and then lastly we see here we have a 50% water content on the outside, 50% on the inside, so it's going to be equal. So some say water will go in freely and go out freely, um, but the biggest thing is, is we need to know that this is going to be uh, no change. All right, now now that we got the basis down pat, make sure you understand, like if you get a question on a test where it says, oh, the red blood cell or the osmotic bag shrunk, you're going to kind of have to work this backwards and think, why did it shrink? And so um, just reverse engineer it. You know, if you get another question, the uh, red blood cell burst. Well, why did it burst? Think about this with these uh, beakers. All right, that is it. Hopefully this helps out, and I will see you later.